Mr. DJ here, coasting right into the 70s tonight for my 70s YouTube channel. Uh, counting down one of my 80s playlist, and then the 60s YouTube channel. Went to the 60s YouTube channel the other night. Now let's go into the 70s. Uh, there's, a, <clears throat> I'm hoping to cut a lot of videos tonight. But uh, this research really gets you caught up. But uh, let's go to Billboard's Hot 100. September, what? Let me bring that up for you real quick. This might be a very sloppy video because there's just so many so many songs I want to cover. Uh, Billboard's Hot 100 of September 11th, 1971. Yes, one of my favorite years, 1971. Any, any time, particularly in the 60s and early 70s. But let's go ahead. We got Uncle Albert and Admiral Halsey by Paul and Linda McCartney at number five, down from number one. Previous week. I don't think that song was released as a single in England. Quite kind of surprising. Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Rip Withers at number four, up from six. Smiling Faces Sometimes. I believe that was produced by a legendary Motown producer, Norman Whitfield. At least he assembled the group, I think. That's at number three. Spanish Harlem by uh, Aretha Franklin. Benny King remake at number two. And Go Away, Little Girl, another remake. Donny Osmond, the king of the remakes back in the early 70s, uh, covering the Steve Lawrence record. But a song I want to talk to you about uh, at number 45, A Lost 45 by Redbone. Yes, their biggest hit, Come and Get Your Lovin'. You might remember The Witch Queen of New Orleans, which came out back in the fall of 71, peaked in early 1972. We got Maggie at number 45. This song sounded a little bit ahead of its time. The beat of the song, is it doesn't sound early 70s. And I can't place it. It seems a little too polished. Uh, maybe something that sounds uh, more retrofitted for the late 70s. Maybe they're just a little bit ahead of their time. Maggie by Redbone. Uh, they were from near Fresno. The, the, the core of this band were two, was two brothers, Pat and Lolly Fagus. And they were originally near Fresno. But they moved to Los Angeles in 1969. Pat had won a singing contest and uh, won the prizes. The prize was a record contract. And they relocated to Los Angeles. I believe that record contract was with Epic Records. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a break that fell right into your lap. These two brothers, they had been performing some in the mid-60s doing surf music together. They'd written some songs, and I just found this out. You're not going to believe this. Remember the song Nicky Hokey by P.J. Proby? Back in 1967, the song was written by Tim Ford, or it might be Jim Ford. I'm waiting through my chicken scratch. But it turns out uh, both Lolly and Pat Vegas co-wrote that song, Nicky Hokey. Got a double check on that, but that's what I found out. And uh, they appeared on Shindig. They played the Las Vegas venue clubs. They did very, They did pretty well back in the 60s. But uh, 1970, they, it was Redbone. They added a couple of people, a drummer named uh, Peter DePoe and also Tony Bellamy, the lead guitarist. I believe it was either Peter DePoe or was it Tony Bellamy who left the group in 1972. Well, anyway, uh, Redbone, their first album, self-titled, 1970, and then 1971, we got Potlatch, which featured Maggie. I'll get into Maggie in just a minute. Which Queen of New Orleans was actually about a voodoo? A woman, a priest, a, I guess a priestess who practiced voodoo back in the uh, back in the 19th century. Her name Marie Lavu, Marie Lavu, Vu Vu Vu. She'll put a spell on you. That's very nice. That rhythm and the record. They they had a Cajun sound, but they were basically sort of a Native American group, tribal funk, blue-eyed soul, a little bit of country, a little bit of pop. You got yourself Redbone. Of course, they hit it big with that standard "Come and Get Your Lovin'." Let's go to the song "Maggie," though, at number forty-five on Billboard's Hot One Hundred. A lost, oh God, it's lost. But you're not gonna believe this. It peaked at forty-five, but it was on Billboard's Hot One Hundred for seventeen weeks. Not bad for a song that did not make top forty. Seventeen weeks—that's what? That's four months, isn't it? Four, eight, twelve. 16, my goodness, about four, a little bit over four months on Billboard's Hot 100. Maggie with Redbone 
on Billboard's Hot 100 of September the 11th, 1971.